Today we are making three easy vegan meals perfect for lazy days or weeknights and whether you're a beginner vegan or an old grumpy vegan like me, I think you're gonna dig these. We're gonna make some mushroom fajitas, homemade instant mac and cheese, and last but not least, a quick and easy general so tofu. We're gonna be using accessible ingredients and mostly pantry staples, so they should be easy enough for just about anybody and they should come together in about 30 minutes. So let's get it going with the mushroom fajitas. And I used to love fajitas before going vegan and I gotta say this version is just as good, if not better, thanks to how meaty portobello mushrooms are. If you want something with more protein, you could totally use something like tofu like I did in my tofu cheesesteak video or some soy curls, I have videos for both. But since we are doing quick and easy, portobellos are the way to go. So just slice them up about a half inch thick, get rid of the stem and optionally you can scoop out the gills. I tried it both ways and I think I like it better with no gills but it wasn't a huge difference either. For the other veggies I'm going to do one red and one green bell pepper but you can use any peppers you like, poblano work great as well, and try to get the longest bell peppers you can for longer strips and then just slice off the top and bottom and then take out the seeds and guts and then carefully cut out the white parts as well as these have a lot of water in them. Slice those into strips like so and now let's get half a large onion and we're going to slice it pole to pole instead of orbitally. That means if the onion was the earth, you want to slice it from the north pole to the south pole as opposed to around the equator. This will make for a much better tasting onion and it's going to cook up better as well. And now that we got our veggies prepped, let's talk seasoning. You could totally use something like these if you already got some at home, or you can use my taco seasoning recipe I got on my blog and book. Typically, I'll just eyeball whatever seasonings I've got, and these are my go-tos, but if you wanna throw together a quick and easy seasoning, let's get one teaspoon each of garlic powder, smoked paprika, cumin, and for some heat, chipotle powder. Stir that up, and that is your quick and easy fajita seasoning. Next, let's get a cast iron skillet, which if you don't have, use what you got. But a cast iron or carbon steel is ideal for getting super high heat, which will give us that charred fajita flavor we all know and love. If you have one of these power burners on your stove, definitely use it. But let's get our cast iron ripping hot, add a decent amount of oil, and then let's dump in our mushroom strips. And I'm grilling four portobellos, so I need to do these in batches, but that's okay because they cook up super fast on account of the high heat. So give it a pinch of salt and just let them sit for a minute or so. Then give them a flip and add in as much of the seasoning as you'd like. After another 90 seconds or so, once they look something like that, remove them from the heat and then repeat with the second batch of mushrooms. And then literally, it's the same process for the peppers and onions, just add them to the pan, good pinch of salt and cook them for about two or three minutes or until they have softened and have some nice color and charring. And don't be shy with the oil, salt or seasoning either. The main thing is to not overcrowd the pan, which I might've done with the peppers, but I was getting hungry and it turned out okay. Once they are all cooked, you can add everything back to the pan just for a minute to heat everything back up and then heat up some tortillas. I went with flour, but use corn if you like. And that's it. Load up your tortilla, hit it with some lime or some hot sauce. And I gotta say that I dug this just as much as I used to when I ate meat. Everything is smoky, salty, and just totally perfect. Next up is the instant mac and cheese. And obviously you can buy something like this, but I almost always have to add some seasonings to it and they can be kind of expensive for the amount you get. I mean, they say three servings, but let's be honest, it's one serving. At least for me it is. So if we put together our own mac and cheese powder, we will save some money and we can tailor it to our tastes. Now the star of this powder is the vegan's workhorse nutritional yeast, AKA Nooch. So we'll do about a half cup of that and then one tablespoon of mushroom powder, which might not be a pantry staple, but it should be. I use this stuff constantly. It just adds a super great umami punch in just about anything. A link in description if you wanna get some for yourself. Then a half teaspoon each of onion and garlic powder and half a teaspoon of vegan lactic acid, which I know not super common, but if you're gonna be making vegan cheeses, it should be a staple. It just adds a cheesy tang that's unparalleled. You might be able to sub in citric acid, but I've never tried it, so let me know if you do. Optionally, you can do a half teaspoon of sassone, or if you can't find this, you can use MSG and annatto for color, but again, totally optional. Then for texture and thickening, we're gonna add in three tablespoons of tapioca starch, and then a half to one teaspoon of salt. You can always add in more later, you can't take it out. And then I highly recommend blitzing this in a blender. It intensifies the flavor quite a bit, so it's a good move in my book. 
And that's it, you are now the proud owner of some vegan mac and cheese powder. And it's worth noting that for this mason jar, I quadrupled the recipe I just went over, and it will be good for about two pounds of dried pasta, which is about eight to 10 servings in my house. But now making mac and cheese is as simple as boiling eight ounces of dried macaroni, then draining and adding in two tablespoons of vegan butter, one cup of unsweetened plant milk, and then four to six tablespoons of the cheese powder. Obviously add more or less of any ingredient depending on how saucy or cheesy you like it, but for me this worked out perfectly. And then just stir that over medium heat to melt the butter and activate the starches and the tapioca flour. And right before your eyes, you're gonna see it transform into the most delicious mac and cheese you ever made, especially without using any cashews or store-bought vegan cheese. And this has quickly become my new favorite mac and cheese, mostly for how convenient it is. I mean, no soaking cashews or cooking potatoes or carrots. And I'll be the first to admit that it doesn't taste exactly like the blue box stuff, but to my taste buds, it's better and has more depth of flavor. And it reheats great too. Just add a little more milk to loosen it up and you're good to go. Last but not least, the General Tso Tofu, which if you don't know is a lightly fried tofu covered in a thick, sticky, sweet, and spicy sauce. I highly recommend getting the vacuum packed, super firm tofu if you can. If you can only get the extra firm in water, that will work. You'll just wanna press it for about 15 minutes, which is fine as we do need to put together the sauce and tofu dredge anyway. For the sauce, let's get one tablespoon of neutral oil, three tablespoons of hoisin sauce, which by the way, if you are working with sticky stuff, you can oil up your tablespoon and it'll make it harder for stuff to stick. <laughs> three tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, one teaspoon of sesame oil. I'm gonna use the spicy kind, but use non-spicy if you like. A quarter cup of water, three cloves of minced garlic, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and then one tablespoon of cornstarch. You're gonna whisk that up, give it a taste, and then if you're like me, you're gonna add in one heaping teaspoon of sambal or something spicy. I thought I had dried red chilies for spice, but I was mistaken. But now that is tasting perfect, let's get our dredging station set up. So get a third cup of cornstarch, a quarter teaspoon each of ground ginger and ground white pepper, a half teaspoon of salt, and then one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, Whisk that up and now let's cube up our tofu. So I like to slice mine into half inch cubes. I find that it's the perfect size for shallow frying. And on top of that, the smaller they are, the more surface area we have for the crunchy and saucy stuff. So cube them up so they look something like that. And then next, let's dredge them in the cornstarch mixture. And you can toss these in a bowl, but when I've done that, I find it comes out kind of lumpy. So I prefer this, which might take a little longer, but the results are gonna be better in my experience. Plus you can do a few at a time if you start to get impatient like I did. And then once all your tofu cubes are coated thoroughly, get a wide skillet and add about one cup of a neutral high smoke point oil and bring it up to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 180 degrees Celsius. Then add in your tofu cubes and you might have to do this in batches, but that's okay because these fry up relatively quickly, just don't crowd the pan. Let them fry for about two or three minutes per side or until they start to get golden brown. And then let your first batch rest on a wire rack while you fry up the second batch. And once everyone is golden brown, carefully dump the oil into a safe container like a metal bowl and let it cool and store the oil for another use, don't dump it out. And you could wipe down the pan a little bit too and then over medium heat, return everybody to the pan and add in the sauce. Stir to coat all the tofu cubes and heat until the sauce thickens. Then serve over rice or noodles, whatever you like, some vegetables. But the bottom line is this was just as good as any takeout I've ever gotten. The crunchy exterior meshes perfectly with the sweet and spicy sticky sauce. And it's just amazing to find recipes like these that are just as easy as they are delicious. So I really hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you make one of these, please let me know how it went. And if you wanna make some other easy weeknight meals, check out this video I got right here. And until then, I'll see you all next time.